Hello everyone, I'm MVL and today we're doing an unboxing and review of the Commodore 64 Mini. Now we'll be taking a look at what's in the box as well as showing you captured gameplay footage of the device in action. And at the end of the video I'll be showing you how to load your own ROMs onto the system. So without further ado, let's get into this. So here we go, I have carefully removed the seals on either side of the box and you get a good look on the back of some of the games included. I will say this is a very beautiful looking box, really nice, will look good to display. And on the side here you can see what is included and what is not included in the box, which is the AC adapter. So let's open this up right now. And I was trying very hard not to damage the box, but uh, I guess it is cardboard. Let's open this up. There we go. And it is Boxception, because inside that box is another box, and it does look beautiful. And let's open this up, because this is where the true content will lie. And there you go, look at that, that's very nicely packaged right there. We have the controller, the joystick, and the computer right there, so let's open this up. First up, I will have a look at this joystick. So here we have a USB controller, and this will work on your computer as well, and this is pretty cool, there's loads of buttons, look at all of these buttons, that's more than one, I imagine most of these are for functions on the Commodore 64 Mini, and it's uh, it's not micro switched, but um, I guess this is a modern controller, and I'm yet to try it out, but it looks pretty good, it looks great, the true test will be how it controls in the games. Okay, so that's the controller, now let's have a look at the Commodore 64 Mini itself. Okay, so I've kind of tore the uh, box apart, but I'll put it all back together again. Uh, we have the C64 Mini right here. Man, this looks great. And obviously, the keyboard is just for show. Uh, it would be kind of cool if it worked, but, you know, it might be a bit awkward to use the keys like this. It can, of course, take a USB keyboard. We have a power light there, and we have, I think this is the on button, and two USBs here and the HDMI and the power in which is by USB but you don't get the power adapter included. Also in the box we have a USB lead, a HDMI cable and a user guide. Great to have a manual that will tell you how to set up the system, how to do your updates, what all of the ports do and what all of the buttons on the controller do. Okay, a quick overview of everything included in the box, as I was so excited and tearing through it. It's fine, by the way, the box is fine. We have the Commodore 64 Mini Console plug-and-play device. We have the controller, USB controller. We have the C64 Quick Guide, which will be useful for telling you how to set things up and all of that stuff. We have a USB lead. Nice to have it, don't really need it. And a HDMI lead. Got tons of those. Nice to have it, don't really need it. What you don't have, which you will need, First up is a power adapter, USB power supply. Now, you know, you can use the lead here, it's useful to have it, but the, these will probably come with a lead if you get one. 5 volt 1A, um, that's what it says in the user guide, that's what I will be using. Most people have tons of these, so this is what you need. You will need one of these to use it, obviously. Now what you may require in addition to this if you want to load your own ROMs is a USB hub because there's only two USB ports on this and you will need three if you want to have a USB keyboard, controller and a USB stick in at the same time and then having said that you will obviously need a USB stick and uh, here is a USB stick and of course you will need a USB keyboard here one is, it's much bigger than the keyboard you can see here of course so now I'm going to show you a quick comparison of the Commodore 64 MIDI compared to its big brother. So here is the Commodore 64 I am currently using and obviously these look very different because this is not based on this model and the reason I use this one is it still works but to give you a true representation you can see quite the size difference I will show you the model that this is based on. And there you go, like magic. So there is the Commodore 64 and here is the Commodore 64 Mini. It's so cute and tiny. There's a couple of differences. Obviously this is a bit worn from color over the years. Uh, there's no text on the side of the keys like there are on the real Commodore 64. But you know, the keyboard's just for show. Most of this is aesthetics. It's nice to have it. And uh, let's get to play some of this. Let's go to some captured footage right now. We're in the main menu, 64 games including Alley Cat, Anarchy, Arm Alti Competitive Edition, Avenger, we have Basic, which is how you run your ROMs, Battle Valley, Boulder Dash, Bounder, California Games, Chips Challenge, Confusion, 
Cosmic Causeway, Creatures, Cyberdyne Warrior, Cybernoid and Cybernoid 2 The Revenge, Deflector, Everyone's a Wally, Fire Lord, Great Game, Gribbly's Day Out, Hawkeye, Heartland, Hero Botics, Highway Encounter, Hunter's Moon, that looks cool, Hysteria, Impossible Mission and Impossible Mission 2, I.O., Jumpman, Mega Apocalypse, that looks cool, Mission A.D., Monty Mole, Monty on the Run, Nebulous, Neverworld, Nobby the Aardvark, Nodes of Yesod, Paranoid, Pit Stop 2, Ranorama, Great Game, Robin of the Wood, Rubicon, Skate Crazy, School Days, Snare, Speedball, Speedball 2, Spin Dizzy, Star Paws, Steel, Street Sports Baseball, Summer Games 2, Super Cycle, Temple of Apsai Trilogy, The Ark of Yesod, The C64 Hall of Fame, Things Bounce Back, Thing on a Spring, Trailblazer, Ushimata, Uridium, Who Dares Wins 2, Winter Games, World Games, Zynapse, Great Game, and then we're back to the start. So, 64 games included. Some I have played, some I haven't played. A lot of great games to check out. So, let's check out the display options right now and see what we can do. First up we have Pixel Perfect, with every pixel as a perfect square. Then we have European 4.3 and North American 4.3. They are different! And then you have the same with a CRT feature on all of them. Pixel Perfect CRT, European 4.3 CRT and North American 4.3 CRT. We have some language options here, you get this when you first turn it on as well. And over here you have some more options, USB keyboard setup, legal notices, system information and factory reset if you need to use that. So we've talked about the games, we've talked about the settings, but what's important is playing the game. So I'm going to play a game called Zynapse, which is a game that I do own on cassette. It's really great to be able to play these games in HD, that means if I wanted to I could record and stream them in full HD. As you can see the game loads up instantly and looks as you expect it to. For a data set it would take a really long time to dump the data onto the system's memory to play it and that's what I'm used to so this is great. Uh, the only problem is, and it's kind of a big one, uh, the controller is made of a kind of cheap plastic, like I said previously it's not micro switched and you really do have to fight it to play the game. It's really stiff, uh, you can't move it gingerly, gently to uh, move around, you kind of do have to push it quite hard and it makes playing the games uh, a lot more of a chore than it should be. As you can see there, I just flew into an obstacle and died. Playing Armalte now, a game I've never played before and that's one of the great things about this system. It has 64 games on it, a ton I've played but a bunch that I haven't played either. I'm a big fan of space shooters, that's why I'm giving this game a go, the same with Zynaps. I'm afraid with the controller, it's just really stiff and awkward to control. Now this game is pretty sweet and because I'm fairly new to it, I was a bit confused about what, what, which ship am I? Because there seems to be two ships on the screen, but this game is really sweet. The only problem is I find myself accidentally steering into things, which is not what you want to be doing. You want to be very precise on these games, as you can see in just a moment where I have to sort of get myself down into this tunnel system there and you know kind of be very precise with my controls which I can't do. I crashed earlier in the game and I crash again later on just because I'm fighting with a control stick. I'm fighting with a joystick. It's just it's not the best even though this game looks fantastic and this is definitely a game that I'll be spending more time playing because this is really fun uh, especially when I got used to it and I figured out you know how to move with the other ship you know firing with both ships at the same time. There was also a fire mode where if you hold down fire you make an empowered shot which is really cool but come on, I'm better than this. We've got to do something about this control. Let's see what we can do. Okay, this controller is killing me. Now, I still need to use the buttons to have menu functions and things like that, but I need something else to get through these games. Here's a couple of the things that I've tried out. I tried the PlayStation 4 controller, the D-pad did not work, the thumbsticks did, and I think triangle was the fire button, but when I went to the quick menu with this controller, everything went crazy, so that wasn't great. I also tried the Xbox One controller, Edge didn't work at all, both of these controllers I tried wired of course. I next tried this old joystick, this is a Microsoft Sidewinder, awesome, didn't work at all. 
<laughs> Lastly, I tried my RetroFeed controller because this is another USB controller from an emulation console. The D-pad worked fine, that was great. Uh, but none of the other buttons did anything else, so I couldn't fire with a controller. Still looking for a solution, I haven't tried a PlayStation 3 controller, but I shouldn't need to go through all of these controllers that should work with USB controllers. So unfortunately, I'm stuck with this thing, and uh, yeah, it's really stiff. Uh, getting me killed on games! So if you want to put your own games onto this, you're going to have to put them onto a USB stick. The way I'm doing this right now is going to be updated with a firmware update to make it easier, but at the moment you have to rename your ROM file to the64-drive8 to make it work. One of the reasons I got this is I wanted to play my games emulated so there's no chance of breaking my cassettes. Now unfortunately it can only run D64 files at this time and most of my collection are on cassettes as you can see. It would be really great if it could run .tap files in the future but I won't hold my breath. That would be amazing though. Okay, let's get ready to launch our own game on the Commodore Mini. You will have to do this through BASIC at this time. There will be an update to make this easier and to load more than one game at once. But until then, this is how it is done. I also have a USB hub in with a keyboard and the USB stick. You can also use a virtual keyboard, which I'm showing you here, but I find it easier to use a real keyboard to key in the commands. Now, I tried the way they show you on the website and that didn't work for me with a different ROM. That's why I'm using Rick Dangerous because I've seen online that that does work you want to type in load quotation asterisk quotation comma eight and then search now I've cut this down considerably it takes a really long time to find your game but once it's found type run and then enter and you'll be playing your game so here we have Rick Dangerous running it's really cool that you can play your own games now one really cool feature here is you can save this state right here and be able to come back to it without doing any of that nonsense that you did on your way to get here so that will save you a lot of time you won't have to type in all of those commands and go through all of that nonsense to play the game again so that's really useful but let's get playing Rick Dangerous as I said really awesome that you can play your own games on this although I did try running one earlier and that didn't work this game did work because I saw online that it did work okay so to start the game you need to press space handy to have a keyboard but for here you need to use one of the Commodore keys which my keyboard doesn't have so I had to use a virtual keyboard to get down to that run stop button to make the game work properly so useful to have that you kind of do need to have that controller now I skipped right into play in the game and here we are true Raiders of the Lost Ark style running away from that boulder oh it's gonna get us it's gonna get us nope it got that guy instead <laughs> and down he goes so awesome that we can play that uh, really cool to be able to play your own games and here I'm going to show you that you can load up your save state and get straight back into the action so we're back onto basic right now opening that save and load game state and loading up that game once more back into it back into Rick Dangerous straight away so there you have it that's my Commodore 64 mini unboxing and review and how to play your own games on it so a really promising system I hope that with future firmware updates are able to add in more controller support and that they can add support for more formats like .tap Thanks for watching, please like the video if you liked it, please subscribe, that really helps me out. I've been MVL, and I will see you next time.